Hey, I'm from the New Hunter Quarter Guy here, and uh, starting off today, I'm going to be making a couple announcements of a couple of upcoming events. First off, my boss rage against Paris Alcia. Tomorrow, Saturday, July 11th, starting at noon Pacific time on Twitch TV, I mean, on Twitch.tv slash Quarter Guy. The link's in the, link's in the description below. Second, back a few months ago, we did 83 put out a tweet asking people if if he were to have an event where he would host Smash matches between uh, Countdown artists, someone replied to him saying they'd like to see a battle between me and Josh Scorcher. I semi-jokingly said that if I lost to him, I'd watch an MLB episode of his choosing. Josh accepted. It a lot's been happening since then, and uh, we never set a date for that. And on his live stream, Josh had the nerve, the nerve, to call me a chicken. He actually did, yeah. So, now a date's been set. That date is this coming Monday. We don't have a time yet, but it's probably going to be on either on we do 83s channel or on his Twitch. I want to, I'm, I'm getting ready to kick Josh's butt. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to bring up today is RPG Maker games. Now, I've seen a lot of RPG Maker games that have original music, but when... But when, when people who make RPG Maker games use game use music from other games, it makes me think that RPG Maker should include a music creation tool, if there isn't already. I mean, I did look up something on the net, and there is this thing called Finale Notepad or something like that. That's like a free music maker with slightly limited, limited capabilities. So if you're making an RPG Maker game and want to make your own music and don't want to resort to just ribbing music from other sources, I would recommend that. And now for our main topic today. KG Nifuni just can't let go of his past. I mean, people are criticizing Mighty Number no. 9 for essentially, like, basically just being Mega Man and not really doing that much to differentiate itself. Not only that, but he's, like, milking it dry before it's even out. I mean, Announcing a live-action movie before the game's even released? I think that's jumping the gun. Not only that, but he's got not one, but two Kickstarters going for what he deems to be a spiritual successor to Mega Man Legends. Yeah, because Mega Man Legends 3 got cancelled shortly after Inafune's departure, I believe it was. So, this game is called Red Ash, and it's it basically... It, basically connected to my number nine to the names of a couple of its protagonists, Beck and Call. And there are two separate Kickstarters going for it. One for the game itself, and one for the animation. I mean, one for an animated series. I mean... Uh, just focus on the game first! You don't build hype by announcing all this tie-in stuff! It's not building hype, it's actually killing it! Sorry, Inafune. But that's not how you do things. I mean, Iga seems to be doing things right. He's not announcing uh, anything for Bloodstained besides stuff regarding the game itself. He's not announcing tie-in material. He's just... He's just doing the game. Okay, which... And then, now we're here for our question of the week. Since I'm doing my boss rage, I'd like to ask you. What's the saltiest that a boss has ever made you in a video game? As always, leave your answers in the, in the comments below. I'll take my favorite answers and feature them on next week's episode. Here are last week's winners. And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. Remember, if you want to send me a question, if you're on your PC or Mac, go to my YouTube channel, click the About tab, click the Send Message button, and that's how you do it. First question comes from Rachel Flynn, who asks, Do you play Pokemon competitively? No, in fact, I don't really play a lot of games competitively, because... 
competitive, the competitive dynamic is a lot is a lot different from normal gameplay. I mean, you have to take all this complicated stuff into account. For example, in Pokemon, you have like stat growths, IVs, EVs. Just a lot of complicated mess, and I really can't keep up with it. Besides, if you play competitively, you pretty much have to dedicate yourself to it. And I've got other things to worry about, so that's why I don't play most games competitively. Next question comes from the KH Fan 12 who asks, What are your thoughts on the physical release of Shovel Knight? I think it's a good thing, because there are quite a few gamers out there who really prefer physical media. I'm personally one of those people, though. Yeah, I'm one of those people who never wants to see physical media disappear completely from gaming. Though, with the growing with the growing popularity of Steam and mobile devices, that's a future that might actually happen. Sadly. But I'm glad Shovel Knight's getting a physical release. It's gonna grab a wider audience, which is always good. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, Free DLC is going to be coming with that digital, with, with the physical release. Yeah, in fact, the Plague of Shadows DLC is coming very soon. I may do a Let's Play on that. After all, I did a blind Let's Play on Shovel Knight itself. Next question comes from e 123 robot Pawn, who asks, What is your favorite Robot Master theme in the classic Mega Man series? I would have to say, the Arranged Works version of Pharaoh Man's theme from Mega Man 4. I mean, the original theme was good in itself, but to be honest, that that remix it just it just screams Egyptian to me, which is appropriate because Pharaoh Man is in fact an Egyptian-based robot master based on Egyptian culture. Well, ancient Egyptian culture, but still Egyptian culture, and I absolutely love it. I mean, it's just wow. Though. So, if I have to go with no non-remix themes, I would go with Tornado Man's theme from Mega Man 9. It was like, it was the first music I heard from the game, it was in that glorious trailer, and hearing it for the first time, I knew you were going back to the old school that I loved so much. It felt like a nostalgia bomb hitting me in the face and exploding with a 10 mile radius. Man, that was freaking amazing. Next question comes from Dave Simon, aka Floatsalover, who asks, Are you a fan of the Gundam series, and if so, which one? I wouldn't say I'm that big of a Gundam fan. However, I have seen Gundam in the past. Mainly, it was Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Though, I don't remember that much all about it, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm not really that big a Gundam fan, but I will admit. Giant robots are friggin' awesome. Final question comes from Razoraxer, who asks, Least favorite Xenoblade boss. Freaking Disciple Lorithia!